What's good? We got Daniel Diaz up. He's the first guy in this particular episode or this update for the draft class. He is 22 years old and he is from Spain. Got a little rookie, Ricky Rubio thing going on there. Uh, I think he's a pretty good prospect, though, from what I've seen. Measures about six foot nine in shoes, uh, with a wingspan that is really not very impressive, though. His wingspan is actually smaller than his height, six five and a half. So that's definitely going to hurt him in regards to what people think about him as a defensive player. Um, Average, he does still average one steal a game and 6.8 rebounds. So, it, you know, Jimmy Butler's we're not comparing him to Jimmy Butler, but Jimmy Butler's proof that, you know, wingspan doesn't necessarily mean everything because Jimmy has some pretty short arms uh, considering for his change. And that. So, uh, the limitations. Uh, situate, you know, uh, uh, you know, he's not explosive athlete, but I would not be surprised, especially if he can, you know, uh, get some workouts in with some in, with some NBA teams. If you saw him start to, you know, kind of climb up draft boards a little bit, it seems like he could be a player who could fit uh, the San Antonio Spurs model. He's a good shooter, may not be the greatest athlete, but if he has a high enough basketball IQ and he knows how to play the game the, pro the right way and buys into, you know, Spurs culture overall, he seems like a guy who could fit there for sure. Um, and obviously, like we said, the, the three is the big deal. And he's, a, I mean, he's showing himself to be a pretty good rebounder, you know, averaging 5.7, I mean, 6.8 rebounds a game. 5.7 of those coming on the defensive side. I mean, one offensive rebound per game is not too bad for a small forward. Uh, shoots 72% from the free throw line, so that's always good. And he's 22 um, years old already, so there's a certain amount of maturity. He's been a professional for a little while, uh, so he could definitely be one of those surprising type rookies. Uh, like I said, I wouldn't be so shocked to see him creep into the uh the, the 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 late first round but as of right now he more like more than likely is going to be a i should have took him up to six nine um he's more than likely going to be a um uh a, a second round player so <clears throat> gotta take this wingspan down um because it's lower and we start everybody off at 40 so we can make that appropriate there all right, and let's take a look at some of his signature stuff. Pretty basic on the jump shot. I didn't see anything that was strange or crazy in the in the highlights, so I, you know, kept it played it pretty straight with him. But you're gonna see uh, when you go to to the uh, to the attributes, the thing that really did hold him back, in, you know, was the a uh, little bit of the athleticism. But he does have some. It's funny because he he does have some pretty good moves off the dribble. He's just not explosive. So that's the thing. Probably doesn't need to have that. But yeah, I don't know. I, I think I didn't change his dunks here. So that's why he had a few more than he should have. But there he is there. Let's take a look. Attributes. I gave him a 69. And this, he, what, he originally had a 68. But taking him up to 6'9 actually took his rating up to a six to a 69. So uh, you see the three-point uh, numbers are good. I mean, he, he shoots it. Uh, and then also because he's older uh, and he's actually a little bit more experienced, uh, I felt, you know, better with putting his uh, rating up a little bit higher on some in some areas. But you'll notice once we get down to, uh, uh, well, if I show you the potential rating, that he's not, uh, he's not really super high from a potential standpoint because uh, a lot of times the potential is about the athleticism. That's one of the biggest things. Obviously, it's about skill too. But when you're not a great athlete, you don't have, uh, you know, you don't have as much room to get, to get, you know, as good as a guy who's a, you know, a, a great run jump athlete. So there's, there's a lower ceiling, which is why his potential is only at a 75. 
So let's look at the badges. Didn't get a lot of those two. Corner Specialist and Dead Eye is what we gave Daniel Diaz. This is Rondé Hollis Jefferson. I, I don't like this render that much. He's actually one of my uh, favorite players in this draft. Not a great shooter at all. But he is a do-it-all guy. He's a glue guy. I think I, I actually don't know if I would ever want him as a starter unless if if only way I could see him becoming a starter is if he improves his jump shot. He's not a good three-point shooter at all. Shot 20% from three-point range. Uh, if he was able to improve as a three-point shooter, you're looking at a guy who has the potential to be a Sean Marion type player. I mean, and, and to be honest, potentially even better because he handles the ball better than Marion and he can put the ball on the floor and get to the basket. He just can't shoot the jump shot, so he, 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 you don't have to respect him from the outside. So if he's on the outside, you really don't have to guard him. You just have to guard him for the drive to the basket. But from a defensive standpoint, he's one of the best, if not the best, on-ball defenders in this draft. He's one of the best. He's right there at the top. You know, the Willie Cauley Stein, Stanley Johnson. He's right there in that in that mix as and Justice Winslow. I would even maybe give him a, a little bit of an edge over Justice Winslow as far as an on-ball defender. Uh, ridiculous arm length. I mean, he he. This guy is a prospect. He stands six foot seven. His wingspan is seven foot two. So he he. I mean, athletically, and then I mean, he has all-star weekend hops like he's probably going to be in the dunk contest as a rookie just ridiculous bounce uh the biggest weakness on his game right now is that he can't shoot so he doesn't want to fall into a michael kidd gilchrist we're not saying michael kidd gilchrist is a horrible player but he doesn't want to fall into into that whole thing of being that type of player only um and the only way for him to break out of that mold is to uh, get a better jump shot. So he's going to have to do that. Let's take a look at the signature stuff. He is also a lefty. Make sure that I, I'm pretty sure he is. Sometimes things get a little bit mixed up. And we got to make sure that we got it correct. Not too much craziness in regards to his uh, uh, signature stuff until we get to these dunks because we got to represent with the dunks. Let's see, here we go. We got the athletic one hander off of two feet. He did have a really funny. Uh, missed dunk though this year was actually kind of funny but most of the time he don't miss them <laughs> he throws them down like this let's take a flip look here 16 badges hustle points scrapper perimeter lockdown defender charge card interceptor pick dodger lob city finisher sprite posterizer transition finisher Defensive anchor, expressive, fierce competitor, friendly, heart and soul, low ego, spark plug. So a lot of that is personality stuff. I mean, this dude is a good, just seems like a really good teammate as well. So that's where uh, some of that comes from. But it's also got a lot to do with just his overall ability. I gave him a 71, which you guys know is pretty high. He averaged 11 points a game. 6.8 rebounds, 0.8 blocks, 1.2 steals, shot about 71% from the free throw line and 50% from the field. Uh, if he had a three-point shot, he would probably be, if, if not the highest rated guy in this draft class, he'd be right up there with him. That's the big thing that his game is missing. We'll see if he gets it in the NBA, but as of right now, yeah, the guy is... Uh, I like him. Right, so there we go. That's Rondé Hollis Jefferson. Let's move on to the last guy in this episode. We got C.D. Osman, another international prospect. He is from Macedonia or Turkey. He's actually is considered Turkish. He's um, considered to be from Turkey. So that's 
where and they actually don't even have Macedonia as a uh, place of origin that you can pick. So he's a small forward prospect. He's 20 years old. He's six foot eight. He's a little thin though. Uh, he can put the ball on the floor, legitly play. The point guard is what the um, scouting report says about him. So that's interesting. Now he is a uh, he's a good three point shooter too. Maybe not quite as good as uh, as Daniel Diaz, but he's a good three point shooter. He uh, seems to be a little bit erratic with the three, though. It depends on you know because in 2013, 14. Uh, he made 52% of the threes, taking 1.6 of them a game. And then the following year, he made only 30% of them, taking 2.4. So it's kind of hard to to know where he is. So we kind of try to find some place in the middle there, um, give him a little bit of respect in regards to being able to shoot the ball. But um, overall, I mean, he looks to be a pretty good prospect. Draft Express rates him the number 51 prospect in this year's draft so that's not too bad we'll see if he can climb up the boards or if there's a team that's like in love with his skill set or whatever we you find that sometimes some teams have scouted ex extensively uh, uh, overseas and they really have a good beat on the guy and you'll see him you know take I think uh, the Bulls did that with uh, Nick and Nikola Miritic they had a really good bead on him and I think that's why they were willing to trade uh, draft picks uh, or you know trade draft positions to get them let's take a look at the signature stuff for Osman now one thing I did see and as well as read is they said that his jump shot form was odd and problematic he they said he pretty much flings the ball at the basket which is why we chose this shooting form and release and Dwight Howard's um, free throw um, uh, motion seem to be the, the one that fit best there as well so um, yeah I think it's probably for a 20 year old well I was going to say it's probably too late to, to, to clean up his form but uh, we've been talking a lot about Michael K. Gilchrist this episode but that's something that happened with him he pretty much reconstructed his entire shooting form he actually did get better this year too in regards to shooting so you know you never can say it's too late but for a guy like Osman who's had some success shooting the ball it's probably less likely he'll be changing his form he got a 64 uh, I didn't hit him too good with the sh with the with the three-point basket you know, you know he can't make them uh, but the erratic percentages made me keep it down he has a really rare position he's a small forward but his secondary position is point guard. So uh, I went by the scouting reports and what was there and what's, what's, what was being said about him. So that's where we came with that one. Um, kind of, if you look at him, play, and this is another Turkish player, so probably shouldn't be a surprise. He does remind you a little bit of Hito Turkoglu. So Tur Turkoglu is about the same size, same height, and also had some point guard skills early in his career. From a Badger standpoint, CD has five. King of Euros. They, they talk about his Euro step as well as his um, his floater. Acrobat, teardropper, shot creator, and the hesitation stunner. So that's it for CD Osman and this episode of this update on the draft class. I appreciate y'all watching. God bless. Peace.